Sapnin. Sapnin. You're right. Always all right. You know what though? Is our club all right? That's the question. Oh, City fans in my comments. City are privately owned. Are they? Privately owned. All right. So like, there's literally so much to get through. But um, one of the things that I want to ask the the, um, the people watching, right, in the audience is the whole debate that's gone on in the past 24 hours with, um, it seemingly looks like football journalism versus finance journalism and where do you believe? Because there's been so many conflicting reports, but the conflicting reports have, have come from two different categories of, of journalism though. Yeah, so we were just talking about this prior to going on there. You've yeah. got um, all of the football media kind of saying nothing's happening. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Or trying to spin the story out a little bit longer. And then you've got Reuters, and as you just said before we went on air, probably got someone directly in the rain group. Yes, probably directly. Yeah. yeah. If not in the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Like looking at, I think they're based in New York, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And uh, have no dog in the fight in terms of that football. Is literally no dog in the fight. They, it, what they do is they literally just report news, like legitimate factual Tier news. Tier zero. Tier zero. Yeah, they're no gossip. They're not, it's not about gossip, gossip or rumours or they've got, so there'll be no reason for Reuters to lie. So they come out with reports and then it's just been like almost spun by football journalists at night. It's not the, it's kind of not the case, but they're, they're not completely saying Reuters are wrong, but they're spinning it just to like play it down heavily. Did you see how Reuters did it last night? So Reuters went, here's what's happening. And then all the, mostly British media kind of went, that's not happening. And then Reuters went, we see what you've wrote. Is what's happening. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, and people, thought, people, people thought like now people thought that Reuters just like republished the same article, but that's they didn't. They included. They was like, yeah, yeah we see British media saying this. Yeah, here's, here's what's actually happening. So yeah, they've literally. So what they did is they, so they saw. So they it's saw everyone being. Funny, yeah, it's funny. So they saw all the football journals being saying like, oh, that's kind of not happening. This and that. So they've republished the article again later, but they've added. They added more sources. It was almost like them flexing a little bit, like, all right, so you think we're wrong. We'll see, we'll see who's wrong. Yeah. And, then they, they, and then he basically added more sources and he added more like financial experts talking so about what's going on. Before we went on yeah. air, I was saying this to Ronnie, but I'm, I don't think I'm breaking any secrets here. Um, it was Jamie Jackson that said this to me at one point and he said, sometimes you know you're being lied to, right? Yeah. He goes, whether you're talking to a, uh, somebody as a representative of a club, a board member, a player, an agent, whatever it is, he goes, so, so for those who aren't aware, good journalists. Yeah. So not someone who works at a Metro or MEN, but actual journalists who do this for a living and not just like, you know, trumped up blog writers. They they don't just go off tweets for their news. Yeah. They will actually do, I don't know, journalism, funnily enough, funnily enough. So Jamie Jackson, for example, let's say he hears, let's do it this summer, right? Let's say he goes... Um, so there's some talk that David De Gea has been offered a contract from someone in the Saudi yeah. League. Uh, I think you can like, literally just call it the Saudi League, because aren't they basically just like buying players and allocating them clubs? Yeah, yes. So let's say the, the Saudi Prem has offered De Gea a contract. So he might go straight to De Gea, he might have that contact, and he might say, have you been offered a contract from Saudi? De Gea will probably say no, mm. even if he has. Yes. And he might have gone, he might have been the last port of call that he was checking his story out. So he might have spoken to like the PR guy at the Saudi League and he goes, yeah, De Gea's one of the ones that we've offered a, list, uh, a contract to. He might have spoken to a player who's a friend of De Gea's, um, one matter maybe, and he'd be like, hey, have, do you know if Dave's been offered a contract from the Saudi League? He might go, yeah, yeah, I've heard he has, yeah. And then you eventually get around to the player and the player says, no, I've not been offered. You as a journalist can't write, De Gea's been offered a contract. Because you spoke to the player and the player told you no. Even if you don't believe that, you're gonna have to write your report and say, you might even rephrase it, a source close to the player, the fucking player himself. Yes. Denies X, Y, and Z. And then the next week he might sign for them. Everyone's gonna come to you and go, you fucking dick, you said he wasn't signing. You can't go against what you've been factually told. I've been burnt by this myself. Nah, it's true. Nah, but it is true because there's so a, I, there's a th point in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So the, the point in this was all of the the journalists based in the UK, they've probably got Richard Arnold, John Murta, Darren Fletcher, players, you know, people like that that they can go to and go. 
as Sheikh Jassim won the bid. And if they've not been told by the Glazers, and even if they have been told yes by the Glazers, but been told you're not allowed to say anything, he's got to deny it. And if you look at some of the language used in this denial, it's, oh, uh, that's not entirely accurate. Or, there was a Simon Stone one the other day that he said, play down. Yeah, play down. Play down, that so, was telling. And like I said, look, if you ask me if I done crack this morning, am I gonna play it down or I'm gonna go, no, I haven't done crack no. this morning. Yeah. <laughs> If you say, have you had a Red Bull this morning? I might play down how many Red Bull I've had. But you'll say, yeah, but I've exactly. had Red Bull. So what does it tell you? So, it, nah, because the way I'm seeing it is, that's exactly what happens. So football journalists will, will have their sources that they'll go to and they will just get told what their source wants them to believe is happening, right? Or what, what they want to be put out. Whereas, obviously the likes of Bloomberg and Reuters, their information is legitimate, factual, and think of Director. the reputation that those guys have yeah, got. Exactly. They, so, they don't have the same editorial standards as the MEN, where they can just like- Where they can just, yeah, they can't, they couldn't, imagine they can't really risk their, there's no reason for them to, they, they were so confident, I think they've released it about what, how many times have they done the article? About five, six times? I think they even relayed, it, relayed an, an extra part of it about half an hour ago, Reuters. So I think they're seeing the news and they're seeing that it's circulating. Obviously, it's good for clicks or whatever. Oh, but and by the way, every single one of you that's going, Steve's been told something by Rio. Uh, nothing at all. And didn't even get the heads up yesterday before. Like I saw mm. your video after all of you lot saw it, probably. But I think he saw it first. Yeah, I, saw, I literally saw it and told Steve. And then Steve was like, fucking hell. There was not, nothing in not our told? group chat at all. Yeah, he's being quite tight-lipped about it, isn't it? But anyway, but it's one of those where all... It seems to point towards Sheet Justin, but then you had Time Sport come out and then be like, Ratcliffe's still the, the favoured bidder, which is a complete opposite swing to what's been like the wave of the news. So then I'm thinking, what do you actually believe? And then part of me thinks- And I think they've been told that. I think that someone has said that to them. Who? Do you believe that any of these th institutions or these news have, not, not agendas, but they're like, they might be, the mouthpiece for one or one side or the other, or is that is that too much of an extreme statement? No, to make? I think it probably likely because uh, we know what we know. Money rules the world, right? They say billionaires do. We are dealing with billionaires. Yeah, at do least. Do you know what I mean? And this, this sold, is annoyed me this week, by the way. Yeah. People are going, "Oh, Sheikh just seems worth one point two billion." What? Because the internet says so. Here's the thing, right? Have you ever seen Arabs on the the richest lists? No, no, never. They don't report their earnings. They, there's, they're under no obligation to do so. So where's that figure come from? Has someone got access to his fucking bank book? Like, uh, Probably propaganda. And here's the thing, yeah. Sheikh Jassim's not the only guy buying us. It's the 92 Foundation, which I believe is a consortium of people. Now, there's a couple of people have been tweeting me saying, hmm. everything in Qatar is ultimately owned by the state or there's a responsibility to the state. I don't know enough about that at the moment. Because I've been arguing with people all morning. People are going, we're owned by the state. But the only evidence that we have seen from anybody is there's a, uh, a quote out and reports out saying that Sheikh Jassim is the head of a consortium of several high net worth individuals, Qatari based. That's it. So I'll tell you a story. So there was a guy I know called Pete. Um, and Pete was a guy that was going to do the legwork for some millionaires. Yeah. And they had a business plan to buy 100 homes. Okay. Pete put nothing in. But Pete got a 20% share of this company that was attempting to buy 100 homes. The four guys put 250K in each, but Pete got 20% as well because he was the one that was going to go do the legwork. Now, is it plausible that uh, Sheikh Jassim might be the figurehead that's doing the legwork? for all of these guys that can't be asked with the undoubted shit that, like, just, I'm, right, I'm gonna put this to you guys as well. Imagine being the face yeah. of Manchester United's ownership. You've seen it with the Glazers. Yeah. Can you imagine how much people are gonna start digging into everything you've ever done? That is why the pro um, there's been another complaint why the process is gonna take, what, eight to 12 weeks once the approval process, once the uh, preferred bid is selected. People are complaining about that length of time because that's basically two, three months for it to be approved. Where it didn't take that long for Todd Bowley and his consortium to Yeah, that, Chelsea, I mean, that's so. where the government got involved. Like, there's some fuckery afoot there, big time. The way they think rushed that with, through. Yeah. And took it off Roman Abramovich. What the fuck was that all about? Yeah. What, so he's got a mate who's the prime minister of another country that's at war? 
is that what we're really taking people's fucking businesses off them for? Because yeah, I remember you went on. A, I remember when this happened. You had a, you had a lot to say about that. So about, yeah. Yeah, about about the way Roman street, but it's like to me, I don't know. It's it's interesting because for it to take that long as a approval process, obviously United probably is up there the likes of the Dallas Cowboys and Real Madrid is being like probably the biggest sporting franchise in world football. It's obviously going to be the biggest deal once it goes through for six billion. So maybe is that the reason why it's going to be looked into a little bit more detail, the approval process is going to take maybe. a little bit longer or is it just that United's getting a little bit of, just getting a little bit of difficulty as we always seem to do to be fair. People think it's the opposite. So but I think it's saying here, Fergie's saying that he's as linked to the state as you can get, right? So when I buy a business as a former military person yeah i'm as linked to the state as you can get people are like oh you used to be employed by the state therefore this is no i'm still a private individual I, all right i admittedly don't know enough about life in qatar and, mm. and all this that number he's the son of a former prime minister right i don't have the royal family tree of qatar to hand i have no fucking clue i just find it funny that people have tried to lump united in with what's going on at psg they've said this mm. is separate to psg until someone provides me the evidence otherwise, then it's separate to the PSG thing. I've said this all along. I have my suspicions, but suspicions aren't proof. No, they're not. That's, th that's all I will say on this. People are like, so what's changed your mind? Nothing's changed my mind. I just, I work on proof. I, if I see proof that it's state owned, yeah, I'm gonna be fucking wounded, but I'll take the proof. At the moment, I ain't seen any proof. All I've seen is that someone <laughs> said, these are private individuals. Yeah, but realistically though, it is state owned. Though, realistically, no, you can't say that without. Nah, but I know, but like, the might not be look, pr getting proof might be a little bit difficult. But I think we'll never be able to fully, if it goes, if it goes through. Which, to be honest with you, I'm on board with. Um, I just want this whole ordeal to be over. But to completely disregard it as being not state owned will be will be difficult to do over time. There you go. Richard says yeah. the state would be public funds. Are there public funds? Not seeing that anywhere. No, this is the thing, right? Whether or not you suspect that this is the case, whether or not in your heart you believe it, because like I said, and I did a transfer review this morning, mm. and I said, look, these these rumors about Mbappe and Neymar, if both of them rock up here, that completely obliterates my argument that there's no connection here with PSG. Because that's carnage if both of them just, oh, we just decided to sell the left hand to the right hand, did we? Like, but as it stands, I work on proof, mate. And the, the only thing I can find about who is gonna own this football club is, it's a, a, a consortium of high net worth individuals. That's all it says, and it says private. It's so for everyone so going, Sheikh Jassim's not got that sort of money, cool. Maybe he's not the one putting all the money in, but he's getting to he's, he's the, face. the face of he's it. He's the face of it. Because yeah. then it is what it is. Do you reckon Ed says there, you can't say it's state-owned outright, but you can definitely say QSI and QIA are very much linked together. But maybe you can, right? And I'm not here defending it. And although that's what it's going to look to some people who don't have critical thinking, I'm not here defending it. I'm just playing devil's advocate. That's what yeah, I fucking yeah. do, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying... Show me. No, but it, it's it is in a sense it's it's right what you're saying because also you know I mean? people have said it is definitely separate to PSG. So I got to take people at their word for it. The same way we've said Richard Arnold. Okay, show me. I'm not here blowing fucking trumpets for Richard Arnold like when he took over from Ed Woodward. You've got to show me. So I'm open minded until I've proved otherwise. But the proof is in the proof. You know what I mean? And it's almost it's like not, your suspicions it, are. Yeah, it's another fucking it's banker not, that's done it's, whatever. It's, it's almost not provable fact, isn't it? Not necessarily, no, because there's, there's got to, for the amount of money coming through, someone's got to be able to point a finger to where it comes from. That's and why I'm the sure approval process is taking three months, exactly. Yeah. And maybe the Premier League are going to do that. And maybe in, in the wash, the Premier League go, "This is funded by Qatar as a state." And if they have, you go, "Okay, hold your hands up." Yeah. What can you say to that? What can you say to evidence? And then shout one fifteen charges. <laughs> Yeah, just shout 115 charges, fuck you, fight me. <laughs> but yeah, un until now, until there's any evidence otherwise, like, you, you gotta just give it the benefit of the doubt. That's <laughs> so, what I think anyway. Abinav says, is is she, <laughs> Jassim, a face or a photo? Uh, there's been more footage of there's him. There's been more photos recently. How much could they pay you to be the face of Manchester United though? Because can you imagine? Can you imagine that 
the it's grief screwy. you're gonna get no matter what you do there's just a high, with Manchester United there's just a high level of scrutiny that you just don't get for any other club yeah. and, and Ericsson's literally said that Ericsson's come out with a quote this morning saying like the the whole like experience at United and the vibe he's got has just been completely different from anywhere else he's played so the pressure's just immense uh, yeah. Connor Sedgwick says Che Adams and Hoyland get them as backups to our number one striker right Steve are you gonna doorstep them or what the um I mean are those jam munching piss wizards that run our club there's a lot to unpack there a it? lot to unpack Man's said a lot but said a little someone there says stop being deliberately clueless I've just lost where he says I'm not being deliberately fucking clueless Fergie, Fergie. fucking hell right. Fergie I'm not being deliberately clueless. If someone shows me the evidence, I'm happy to take it on board. But benefit of the doubt has to be fucking given, right? <laughs> know what I mean? That is true. Especially when the only fucking thing, and I do the research, I went and looked, and there was a guy showing me the fucking Amnesty International thing where he says United fans should be concerned, and I don't disagree. United so, fans should be concerned. Nah, true, but Fergie, what? And I don't want to be owned by a fucking state. Why is he shouting? Though? But he's got his cap box firmly on. Do you know what? At the end of this, what if we end up getting what the owner just ends up being out of nowhere? That is that. Hang on, I need to read some yeah, super that, chats to stack yeah. it up. <laughs> uh, as announced, uh, I want to get excited and enjoy, enjoy the transfer window. So there was something on that that no matter who owns us, whatever we're spending this summer has already been figured out allegedly. So I can only go allegedly. With that. Abinav says Reuters don't have a dog in the Manchester United fight. Their conflict comes when some controversy like GameStop. That's when you you fact check them. What's is that, GameStop? Is that GameStop? Is that conspiracy? I don't know. Is that GameStop like Edward Snowden? Someone I, else mentioned Edward Snowden. I think earlier. he's dipping into 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 conspiracies. Uh, conspiracies Brandon says the uh, they released the retained list and everyone's basically staying. Doesn't seem like getting Maguire or any others out is happening now. What? No, that. You, of course Maguire's on the retained list. That doesn't mean that's getting registered come the end of the transfer window. I think Maguire and his, and his, his hesitancy to leave is the reason why Kim Ming Jay's going to Bayern Munich. Because we're, we're usually terrible at selling players anyway. But the fact that he's been, he's come out, puffed his chest out and been typical Harry Maguire where he thinks he's better than he is. He's got this high pride and ego and he's like, oh, I want to fight for my place. And I feel like he doesn't want to go out the way he's gone out, which is with a whimper and his like hesitancy stopped us from being able to kind of make the move for Kim Min Jae because Kim Min Jae was only ever going to happen if we sold Maguire and sold him quickly because the funds was always going to be navigated more towards a centre forward and um, a centre midfielder and maybe even a goalkeeper ahead of a centre back so without Maguire coming out the door we're not able to act fast enough in terms of getting another centre half. Mark says, Steve, with my scouting, do I look at the stats first, then choose the players? We do it both. So we'll watch games. We watch games mm. all over the gaff. And if someone catches our eye, then you're looking at the data and see what else they've done. And there's sometimes where the data leads it. And you go, fucking yeah. hell, look at this. <laughs> Danny says, bring in Kim. Maguire gets the message to go. I think that was what we would all like, but I think reality bites sometimes and... Yeah, or we can get my, the Finnish guy, and that's what I was going to mention. What's his name? Thomas Sakaius. <laughs> Come on, though. He, he, was, he had the best kind of idea that you wanted, the whole fan owned thing. Yeah, but he's off his tits. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Because he was like, well, all we need to I, do is get like. I think he did it for A pound off everyone. I, I, at first, I thought he did it for banter. Hang on. Joey Karate says, Steve, work on Proof House and uploaded that 115 charges vid. Yeah. Do you know why, Joey Karate? Manchester City, factually, have been charged with 115 breaches of Premier League rules. <laughs> I'm not the one charging them. The Premier League... Oh, my fucking God. There should be an IQ limit to this fucking chat. Brandon says, how do you feel about bringing in more older vets? Uh, I think it's, while it's a temporary fix, puts us back because we have to replace them sooner. It depends what you mean, because I would class Harry Kane as someone in that sort of predicament, and I think he'd be a good shout. Well, Harry Kane's not going to happen now, is it? Because I think Daniel... Yeah, Lee, I reckon that should be put on the back burner. Yeah, Daniel Levy's put, dug his feet in, and then... I reckon that gets revisited in August. And then we, no, but then we're going towards Hoyland and Atlanta are going 85 mil. We're just going to get highballed by yeah, anyone it, that we negotiate with, and it's like... Hoyland at 85 mil no longer makes sense. No, it can't be that price. Do you know what I mean? It's always going to get navigated down, but... 
Chelsea are doing it, Atl- Atlanta are doing it. It just seems as though. Nice. Yeah. Why are City Sat fans so angry that you read out the cha- the official charges set by the Prem? Yeah, literally, was it me reading them? No, it wasn't me reading them. It was the Premier League. That's who charged you. Uh, Rob says, in 20 years, the profile of the super wealthy will shift from oil to other. Uh, what Apple is potentially doing in Miami could be what we see in the future. Apple? Apple involved with uh, Inter Miami? Um, I think Apple are involved with the whole MLS. Right, okay. I think as an institution, which is why, I think, I think the whole revenue that the MLS are getting in general, I think Messi's deal is he gets a part of that. Prabhav has just said yeah. the Qatar bid is obviously state-sponsored. Yeah, but you might think that, and I might think that, but you can't prove that. That's my whole point on this one is you can't prove that. The only thing that anyone has ever been on record as saying is that it's a consortium of a lot of individuals. Now, some of that money might be coming from whatever. Like I said, we don't fucking know. And anyone out here, like, literally, people having a fucking go at me on, on uh, Twitter, I mean, it is Twitter, by saying, are you fucking stupid? It's obviously this. Idea. No, but it's no proof. you got to have the proof. I have my suspicions the same as everybody. Yeah. But I'm not going to declare something that I don't know to be factually true. <sighs> the only thing we know is what's been reported and what's been reported and it isn't. It's not, like, like I said, show me the proof. I'm happily fucking changed my mind. I have my suspicions. But suspicions are not facts. What you think is not facts. It's just what you think. If someone sits there and goes, I think it's state owned. I'm not going to argue with you. Mm. But if you tell me, hey, it's definitely state owned. I go, it definitely isn't. There's confusion. Yeah, there is a lot of confusion. It's, uh, do you know what? Um, <laughs> obviously, you have your own thoughts on it. But in terms of the thing that all I care about really is this coming to a conclusion. So we can talk about the little details, the little nuances about whether it's state owned or it's not whether the finance journals are correct, whether the football journals are correct, but realistically, all we need to do now, especially when we know the approval process is gonna take for f- take three months, we just need a decision. We need a decision and to know that the Glazers are definitely gone. And then we can start to event, like to generally look forward. It feels like with this whole takeover process, as a United fan, we've not been able to look forward at all. No. Do you know what I mean? So that's the- I, I also think that, um I think the fans are owed by both parties and potentially any further parties that are involved in this. And even the fucking Glazers, actually. How about you fucking dickheads got off your ass and actually talked to us for once? You fucking horrible set of twats. Because in 18 years, they've never really addressed the fans. Someone left a comment on one of my videos mm. yesterday and it was brilliant. And he said, whoever it is that ends up buying the club is buying the club and also paying off what the Glazers paid for the club as well because the yeah. debt's still there. It's unfathomable what they've been allowed. How it's been legal, I don't fucking know. It's actually bananas how they've been mm. able to do it. Darren says, have I spoke to Rio about what info he got from his source? No. <laughs> I messaged him and was like, fucking hell, not even get a heads up. Didn't, I got left on red. Um, and Terry says, him. I'm a football fan uh, and an idiot. I'm not a politician. I don't give a hoot. If it's state owned, I just want my team challenging. I do. I don't want us to be state owned. Um, and I don't want United to lose its identity of who we are. You know, when I look at what has happened with PSG, that's one way it could go. You look at what's happened with Manchester City, that's yeah. another way it can go. Mm. You look at Todd Bootley, there's another way it could go. Like, th- there's no guarantee of anything. Like, there's, you know, probabilities from zero to 100% of everything. Yeah. You know, and, and some things are more likely, some things are a bit less likely, but it's one of those. Um, I love the energy. LA Dark Knight says, I love the energy of hating the Glazers when the trophies aren't rolling in. Literally won a trophy this year. Literally singing, <laughs> get the fucking Glazers out whilst lifting the trophy, my friend. Literally was singing about the fucking Glazers in the middle of winning the Champions League in 2008. Do you know what? I'm seeing, I keep seeing Che Adams as a shout, and I don't want to see Che Adams shouts, man. We'll do a scout report on it. Uh, uh, no, probably it, with my head 50% in my hands. No, he doesn't, he doesn't deserve a scout report. I think we'll be doing it. No, that's not, no chance. Martin says, PSG and Chelsea had no historical value. That's not true. They were both bigger than Manchester City when they got took over. DB Cooper says, Rio was good at football. Talk about a fucking understatement. 
Um. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, it's all matter of fact as well. Real's good at football. Like everyone was going to go, hmm, but better than everyone, isn't it? P Savage says, you've earned a pint for this. Appreciate you. It is Friday somewhere after all. Um, who's the South American striker we did the report on? Which one? We did Alvarez before he joined City. Oh, can I ask you a question, Steve? I was meant to ask you before. Can I this? Which Because I've been to Ben before, because it's going through his tat. You don't have any tattoos, John. How do you find that? You seem like the tattoo type of guy. Oh, that sounds like a massive derailer. Ben's got a point. I said to Ben, I said to Ben, I was like, wait, Steve hasn't got a tattoo, has he? And, but you seem like the type of person that would have one, but you don't. Do you think it's um, too late now? It's just a money situation in all No, it's too late now because you're approaching that time now if you get a tat. I'll probably have one in the next 18 months. But then your skin will wrinkle in about... Who gives a fuck? Less than a decade. And what? I think Ben had his about... <laughs> it's going to look like fucking... What? You know when you draw and chase 15 years paper? ago, maybe? 15 years ago, that's what he said. He said he got to sleep all at once and I was like, yeah. wait, you not got a tat. No. Uh, so Ben's got... Uh, he's got a poem on there that um, yeah, we both one. agreed yeah. to get, which is in the event of my demise by Tupac, which is a fucking... <laughs> yeah, um, and I'll be getting the same one uh, because it's got a shared meaning for the, for the two of us. Um, and that... Cost him a grand and a half, he said. Yeah, I, for the same tattoo now, I'm probably looking at five. Reckon, why? I mean... Because you want it on properly. Yeah, and the we've got a mutual friend, actually, Um Shout out Danny Birch, heart for art. Danny's doing content actually about his tattoo tattooing at the moment, and it's unreal. With mm. a tattoo as well, Ben got it done with a really good tattooist, um, and I think you have to do that. I think you owe it yourself. Mm. You don't want to be getting like if someone goes, "Oh, I got a tattoo in Malia." Oh. <laughs> Like, no, I, no, like tattoo. I got a tattoo. I was, I was, where? In, I was in Turkey. No, nah, because when I was in Ugh. Turkey the other day, my mate was like, get a tattoo, get a tattoo. He was going to pay for it. And that. But like, it was going to be like a stupid one. So I was like, no chance. Because right now I'm clean as a whistle and I'm not really trying to. I feel like I would do, but it would have to be meaningful. But right now. No, I know what I want. Thing. I've known what I wanted for a long time. I uh, just haven't had the money to do it. So I want to do it. Um, yeah, it just. You know, I've got a family, I've got kids. And uh, they're like, oh, can I have school uniform? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I eat today? Oh, like, no, because daddy wants a sleeve. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> what does that even mean, though, by the way? Steve, your watch has its own postcode. It's not even that big, in all honesty. I don't think. It's not, it's not that big, is it? Nah, it does look a little bit like a Ben 10 watch. Um, so, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I will be getting a tattoo at some <laughs> point, and it'll probably be a full sleeve. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I want to do it properly. Yeah, I'll probably be doing it with four, Danny Birch. Four army vet. It's a <laughs> four or five month waiting list to get in with him, which is a good thing. Like you shouldn't be able to walk in on the street and get a fucking tattoo. You shouldn't. That's not a good sign. You never know. Um, so no, I, I probably will get one. Um, Ben's is brilliant. Right. Ben's right. is nice. It is, it is, I do rate Ben's. That's why I let you I mentioned it. I saw it. I think I've ever seen his arms before. Um, <laughs> that's why that's so his tattoo and I was like that's pretty decent he's got uh, I think he's got a line on it on his bicep from Royce 5'9 I think and um, Royce the 5'9 fucking hell and he's shown him yeah and Royce was like what the fuck he's <laughs> met Royce the 5'9 yeah interesting it's like um, Eminem's guy isn't he so yeah I, I probably will get one at some point but um, I'm not just gonna get like a two inch square thing I'll be in Full money I'll do the, the works Yeah There was a mate of mine That I used to scaffold with Actually called Danny And um, See I like these ones I just don't think I could pull it off um, And you know He's English British Sort of descent And he had a Maori one And he went to a guy That specialises in Maori ones And I th Think he had A full sleeve And chest Out of it And it looked I Had it done in like One Or two weeks Over the same sort of Like sitting mm. Um, cost him thousands and it looked absolutely sensational and he's a big rugby guy so there's a little bit of the the Maori sort of link towards it there but I'm yeah. just thinking you know that's a real cultural thing that the Maori one I don't know if it looks right on a fucking you know a white British guy from Oldham I mean it looks alright on him and he's jacked as well so it does look alright on him but yeah I don't know yeah 
We've got two super chats there. There was one more super chat, but, su- find but for some reason, I'll find it I'll disappeared. Find um, yeah. Oh, that one's just disappeared on me there then. Calvin Stewart says, I think they are dragging it out so we have a messed up transfer window and a messed up season. I don't think that's the case. I think there's probably so much. Think about how many people have got like a five, a five as worth of shares. You got to contact all of those fucking uh, people and like sort them out. I think it's that, but I also think it's the fact that I, if the Glazers are planning on selling, are they really going to give a fuck about the transfer window, etc., for United this season if they're not going to be owners? I think it's been up? ratified what we're going to spend already. Yeah, it has to have been. Um, I'm trying to find the rest of these super chats. Peter Kelly says, "Can the government not start retros- not start retrospectively start vetting both potential new owners so the approval?" can be reduced probably not because as we th- you know we know of two there might be more like we only know of two because people are leaking at this two like I said there might be a random fucking like mm. gold miner from fucking Ottawa that just fucking pops up on the scene you you, you said that a few you said that for a few weeks ago to me and I thought nah there's no chance I think it was two main bidders there's two main bidders there was NDAs I know, there's only I, these two that are breaking them somehow yeah I know there's NDAs but I, I feel I feel like at this point or at this juncture where it's basically at the end of it, the end game, so to speak, there was someone else in the mixer would have been mentioned already. Um, Cause I don't what's think my opinion on getting Nevers? I don't think we're gonna, but I like him. I like him. He's a good footballer. Wait, so you really think an NDA is gonna be violated by someone just saying these are in the running? Yeah, it's non-disclosure it means don't disclose it. Isn't so if there's an NDA and there's a non-disclosure agreement, yeah, with a lot of what's going on. When journalists are going to people, the football journalists are going to people to ask questions. They shouldn't really be getting any answers. Yeah, then. and that's why the club so are what, playing everything down. Which is why, it's really, how can we believe anything that these football journalists are saying on the matter when there's obviously there's an NDA issue and they're not going to be necessarily told the whole truth. They're just going to be reporting what they're told, as we said, which yeah. might, probably isn't the truth. But then, the other thing I'm is thinking they, they, could, they could have a mole, though. They could, yeah. NDAs wise, you, you could still get the truth, but just yeah. by, they should not. And this is what confuses me a little bit at the moment the game playing that's going on. And also, like, let's, who do, what are we doing here? Stop it. Um, there's also, I completely threw me now, everybody. These two fucking about, Herberts. Um, yeah. There's, um, <laughs> what the fuck was I saying? Oh yeah, so like, let's say Mason Mount, right? We've obviously flung a bid in for him. It's been rejected. They're probably gonna go back yeah. with a second bid. When you sit down to go with Mason Mount, he goes, who's our owner? Is it Glazers? Well, yeah, how long for? But they're so adamant that, it, that this isn't slowing everything down. It's not slowing it down, but you as a player, I'm gonna commit four or five years to this football club. Who's gonna own us next month? Can't tell you that. So what's the vision? What vision are you selling me? Come play for Manchester United, and then what? Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's a massive part of it. When when someone sells the club to you, they they got to sell the vision to you. You're not just signing for Manchester United. You're signing for Manchester United, and we're going to do this. It's the, no one can it's have the that club, conversation. Yeah, the, the owner. Yeah, it's the everything. manager. You no, know, if yeah, it's got if it's Jim Radcliffe, we're, I'm gonna we're, again. I said this earlier, but we're buying the club or someone's buying the club and talk to us. Tell like Jim Ratcliffe, I'm, why, I'm buying a club because I want to uh, drill the gas that's under Carrington. Yeah. What shape, Jesse, why are you buying a club? Is it to fucking um, continue the legacy of sports washing from the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> or is it because man and boy for the last 18 months you've been a United fan yeah I know or, or is it that, and you, you want to win the Champions League just come and talk to us and it's, the Glazers talk to us you fucking you're not, getting 6 billion can we get a conversation they ain't going to talk to us you know what But someone's just mentioned did Steve hear that Greenwood isn't leaving I don't know if you've already mentioned this but obviously he was on the retain list but he's under contract so he's obviously going to be on the retain yeah. list that's just all that's people happened. are not applying common sense to this so. You can't put De Gea on the contract on the retained list because he hasn't signed a contract beyond the end of this season, right? That yeah. doesn't mean he won't. That doesn't mean he will. Again, mm. it's working facts, people. Mason Greenwood is on a contract. Him being on the retained list, the same way, wasn't he registered in, in January? All of last year, basically. right? And what? That's what you would expect, because United's position. We talked about this in terms of the bargaining. 
if United are trying to sell him, and we don't know what they're trying to do, if they're trying to sell him though, and he's not on the retained list, mm. like it weakens United position when it comes to like, oh, well, we were planning on playing him actually, so we want 40 mil. Like, it weakens your position. It's just dumb. You can't put the hair on a retained list because he hasn't got a contract that covers that season, so he ain't coming. That doesn't mean that you can't put him back on it and register him, like, if he does sign. Like, come on, people, just put some fucking brains behind it. No, no, it is true. And also, like, factoring away from the whole, the whole Greenwood De Gea thing, you mentioned Under Glazers getting six billion. Cash. Can you, all right, so I saw you tweet about it, and this is something that you'd always be interested in. It's the whole way that Glazers end up acquiring Manchester United. Moran and says the mirror just broke that De Gea is leaving. The mirror? That's what he says. Go on, Mark, as you say. All right, so with because this is something that would have interest to you so you tweet about it but i thought as soon as i heard about it i was going to mention it, i was going to message about it anyway because that's something that would blow your red so there's been a lot of talk about the way the glazers actually acquired manchester united in 2005 was it and how they're possibly leaving with six billion and is that straight prof almost right so Cause that could that uh, doesn't sound doesn't make any sense to me when i saw that again there's some technicalities have the Glazers ever paid anything for Manchester United? Yes, right? So I, I don't know if there was loans to get their initial yeah. shares, but they had somewhere in the region of around £200 million worth of shares. This is when Martin Edwards owned 11%, I think it was at the time, and was still chairman. JP Magner at McManus, mm. Fergie's old friends with the horse cheers. I mean, people try and... One plus one equals two with that as well. Like Fergie fell out with the two horse owners over the Rock of Gibraltar and the rights for selling that horse spunk. Does that mean that because they fell out with Fergie on that business deal, they sold United to the Glazers? Not necessarily. Again, probably. But there's no proof of that. I don't think they've ever, they've never come out and said, we fell yeah. out with Fergie, therefore we sold the club, therefore blame Fergie if you want. They've never said that, right? There's assumptions being made. Doesn't mean they're true, doesn't mean they're false. You don't know. It's the same with the, the state ownership of Qatar. You can have your assumptions. I'm not going to argue with you against your assumptions. I'm only going to argue with you when you, you declare something to be factual when we don't know. Um, so when they had two, they had 25% of the club and then the rest of it was distributed amongst like any fucker. You make down a pub, someone's auntie, whatever. They then started increasing their stock holdings Again, don't know if that was with their own money. Don't know if that was with cash. I believe whatever they had, they had 200 million quid's worth of, roughly. And they made that back, I think, in two years in terms of dividends and bullshit. So that, plus the dividends they've taken, plus the 1.5 billion that's been drained out and gone to the banks, plus the fact that debt is still in the club, they're walking away with 6 billion. They'll walk away with six billion, like between them. And obviously a lot of the reports is the only, the main reason why the Glazers are still here is because of Avram and Joel. Apparently the other siblings have been kind of wanting out for a little while. Yeah, there's two the of them that want to kick around. And yeah. even if that's not the case, that, I mean, there's there's so many people that I, I trust and respect that have said two of them don't want to stick, uh, don't want to sell. Whether that's the truth or whether that was that they didn't want to sell because they would raise the price. That they were saying that there was two of them didn't want to sell. Four of them couldn't really give a fuck, to be honest. It was the two that you see the most of: ponytail, baldy face, and his mate that looks like he fucking cuts his grass with scissors. They are strange. Just uh, mate, just fuck no, off. Go and enjoy your fucking billions. Why, why did billionaire, billionaires always look kind of kind of strange? From like Elon Musk body shape, and then you've got Jim Ratcliffe who. Doesn't feel, Joy, the doesn't, most doesn't, normalish one looks like is Bezos, and he's probably off his tits. Nah, does he though? Fucking looks. He like, started getting jacked. Nah, he? he looks like Charles Xavier. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then you got Jim Ratcliffe with he has basically no trim on his hair and no trim on his face. He looks like he's he's not seen, used a trimmer on his head or his beard in years. It's just like everyone that's kind of got billions. It looks like they're kind oh, of. Oh yeah, a so bit it's of an sixty-nine upper. percent of six billion. Sixty-nine. Whoa. Yeah, because there's the whatever ownership <laughs> on the stock exchange, exchange, isn't it? <laughs> Who cares? 
Like, I can't believe they wanted to keep hold of it. Just the negative energy that must be coming towards you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I, I don't believe United have got what are they claiming? One point one billion fans. I don't think it's one point one billion. That's where that Thomas fucking yeah. Zilicus was off his nut. We just get a run up pair of fiver. Um, Reuters Roy, Roy, did a, a video earlier like, where they actually stated the amount of fans that he thought. I think they said six hundred and fifty million. All right, is, that's is, still is, coming from that fucking survey, which is incorrect. I reckon yeah. it's probably 100, 200 million fans, somewhere in that sort of region. Yeah. I think. Something, mm, probably around that, probably growing. Obviously, City, City don't have anywhere near the same fan base. Obviously, a lot of theirs is younger generation, kind of latching onto their um, 115 charged, a little bit successful in the past decade. I can't wait for when that falls. I've been praying on it. I don't know if it will. It probably won't, but I'm praying on it. I don't think it will. I, I think Too much money involved in it. What could be a madness is if if Sheikh Jassim has the same level of ambition that we've seen mm. um, with Mansour, which you would assume is the case. You can't assume that... Mm. The, obviously, you was in Qatar with me. Yeah. They've spared no expense anywhere. No. <laughs> like, they've not cut a fucking corner. Maybe in terms of paying the workers. Do you, do you know, apparently, like, after workers that was there, that was getting all the shit finished, they fucking booted them out without paying half of them. So maybe some corners have been cut. But at least on the surface of stuff, it doesn't look like they've cut corners. It looks like they've gone absolute balling out of control. Like, the, the pavements, the roads, the metros, yeah. all of that sort of stuff. They've just done it to the, the best they can do it. You it, basically. Yeah. You can't imagine that they would buy a football club and not do it the same way, where they've just gone... Like, at the moment, the way I would say the Glazers run the football club is that they will get a quote, and then they've got a mate who will do it cheaper, right? That feels like how the Glazers mm. run this football club, whereas I think Qatar ask you, how do we make this look the best? And then you give them a price, and then they pay it, maybe. I think I feel like that's what they're going to do. So I feel it would it would be a similar thing to Manchester City, which means Manchester as a footballing city potentially might have. I I, I grudgingly have to say City are probably the best team in the world at the moment. No, yeah. I would think after five years of a, an owner that wants us to be the best team in the world, you've probably got the number one and number two best teams in the world, whichever way around that is at the time. I don't know, but you're probably going to have Manchester having team number one and team number two in the fucking world, which is an absolute madness for any city. Yeah. Has that ever happened? Has there ever been a city where number one and number two in the world are? Never, not even London. Where well, London has probably the most football clubs that are, are, are high level. I'm talking about Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham. But in terms of two, nah, never. Because even Real Madrid and Barcelona, they're, they're, not the same city. they're almost like... No, Atletico they almost, they almost, they almost even want to be different countries almost, yeah, don't they? Literally. <laughs> literally. literally. Milan, has Milan ever had it? Atletico and Real, uh, Atletico Real Madrid have been a final. Yeah. In the, but have they ever been one and two in the world at the time? Or has they just one of them made a final? Have Inter and AC ever been the best two teams in the world? Milan's Milan. a hell of a footballing city, give you that. Milan in the 80s? Don't know about that. Milan's probably the closest. So one person said Madrid. That would be Atletico and Real Madrid. But then Inter and Milan, Inter and AC Milan historically seems about the closest. I think what United and City could do could put it in another level. Well, two bigger clubs, aren't they? Well, don't know if City's bigger than Inter and AC Milan. No, but this yeah. last decade or so of success has, has definitely given them um, more of a following than they had. Lazio, Roma... I don't think either of them have a Champions League. That's your Roman's like a bit of a mad shout. Someone said Millwall. <laughs> what a set of absolute fucking Herberts, by the way. And please, clip this up and send it to him. I've never known a fan base that revels in being like fucking racist, hooliganism, and just utter widgery than Millwall. And they're proud of it. <laughs> there was a guy once I was in um, I'd just finished basic training and I was out with I think 
let's say about a dozen army mates. And uh, this guy, tried, we were playing pool in a pub. And we're pretty young. We're like, I was 19. Everyone's like, everyone who joined, everyone in basic training is like that age. If you're 24, you're the granddad of the fucking platoon. This guy mm -hmm. pushes in front of someone. And I was like, oh mate, we got a cue. And he's like, and fucking what? Massive derby on him with Millwall tattooed across it. Opens his shirt and he's got proper like five quid tattoos all over him, but he's got Millwall across his belly and he's just shouting Millwall at me. And I'm going, are you all right? Are you all right? <laughs> and he's like, it's like, if you want the fucking pool table, let's have a fight about it. And I was like, I mean, I said, just, just to let you know, but you see everyone looking at you, like they're all with me and we've all, we're all in the army. I said, if you really want it, I don't think it's going to end well for you. And then he just left. <laughs> nah, okay, I can definitely imagine that. Honestly, he was 50. I got, I got the same vibe from Chelsea fans. They're a bit like... I think they've got an element of a that. Bit, a bit pretend. Sticking and out the he went outside. He went outside after totally de-escalating it. He went outside and then just shouted Millwall through the window. <laughs> and it was just shouting, no one likes us, we don't care. Oh, okay. No. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, well, right. Know. Cheers for tuning in, as always. Hope you have a good weekend, uh, whatever you're up to. I think Joe Smith's joining us on a brew in just over an hour if you want to tune in for some more wibble. Um, but take it easy. Have a good weekend. Um, I reckon it's Barbecue Central this weekend. I think so. Yeah, I can smell it. See you in a bit. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.